Welcome to Dooley Field at Sanford Stadium as the Dog Nation celebrates Georgia going back to back for the first time in college football playoff era. <laughs> to capture the 2022 National Championship. Now this was a special season. The Dogs completed just the third 15-0 season in the modern area of college football. Georgia pulverized number 14 LSU 50 to 30 to capture the program's 14th SEC title before edging out number four Ohio State 42 to 41 in the semifinal Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. Then on Monday night, the dog scored 65 points. Now, this was the most points ever scored in a national championship contest to top number three TCU, 65 to seven. Marking the largest victory in a bowl in CFP history. Now, today we have several, se several speakers joining us in the celebration. And now we're gonna welcome our first speaker who was hired in January of 2021 the J.R. Reed Parker, Director of Athletics and the Best in the Country, Josh Brooks. All right, Josh, now we get a chance to talk uh, every single week, and uh, obviously we're here to celebrate the dogs and celebrate what's going on, but Georgia Athletics as a, as a whole, Georgia Athletics as a whole has been pretty impressive this fall under your leadership. Why do you think your staff has had so much success so far this fall? DJ, I think when you really think about it, it comes down to people, right? And it starts with President Moorhead, his staff, then you go over to Coach Smart, his staff, the student athletes, every single member of our athletic department. When everyone's pulling in the same direction with the same goals, it's amazing what can happen. And we've had a phenomenal fall. This has been really the best fall semester we've ever had when you think about the success football's had, soccer, volleyball, and the best GPA in fall history for Georgia athletics, all on top of everything else, right? <laughs> we are creating a powerhouse in academics and athletics, and it all starts and ends with great people. Absolutely. Now, let's keep it real, and I think everybody in here will agree with me. I'm sure you agree with me. We got the best head football coach in the entire country. And becoming one of the best in Georgia history for sure. What do you think sets Coach Smart apart from everybody else? Well, for me, I think it's two things. First, the fact that he's an alum and his wife, Mary Beth, are both alums, the care and love they have for this great university for this state, for this town, their love, and, and you, can't rep, you can't replace that, right? Yeah. Then it's a focus on the process, right? And I think the, the way he models that and focusing on the process every day, getting better at the simple things every day, it's bled over through the entire department, whether that's student athletes, coaches, my staff, everyone, where we're all focused on the process, how each of us can do our jobs a little bit better every day. And when everyone's focused on the process and not worried about the results, then the results will speak for themselves and happen just like they've happened here recently. So it's process focused. We love it. We love it. Now, I've heard you talk many times about your mentor and friend, and we have uh, Ms. Barbara Dooley and her, and her family here today. Can you speak on what Coach Dooley meant to you? Yeah, Coach Dooley, the entire Dooley family means so much to me. Um, I, I just love them so much. I'm so honored that Miss Barbara and their family was able to be a part of this journey for us these last few weeks, accompanying us to the Peach Bowl and to the National Championship game. Um, I miss Coach so much. There's been a, a few situations the last few weeks where I wanted to pick up the phone and call him and ask him for advice, so I'm already missing that aspect of it. But we're going to work our best to honor his legacy in everything we do. And I've said it before and I'll say it again. Coach Dooley is Georgia Athletics, and Georgia Athletics is Coach Dooley. Absolutely. 
Now, there's, uh, there's no doubt in my mind. I know there's no doubt in your mind, and I've heard Coach Smart talk about it every single week. But this is the best fan base in the nation, Ain't correct? no doubt. Thank you all, the best, best fans in the nation. Now, the way Georgia's been able to m maintain success over the years is because of all the things that you just spoke of. But when you think about this Bulldog Nation, how do you think they can continue to have the success that they've been having and help this program continue to go? Yeah, well, it, it all starts right here in Sanford Stadium. We create the best home game to atmosphere in all the country right here. And then we go on the road, east coast to west coast, doesn't matter where we go. They show up and they support and they create a home field advantage throughout the country, yeah. right? But beyond that, the support they've given financially in other ways allow us to build first-class facilities, provide first-class resources for our student-athletes. And now in this ever-changing landscape of NCAA, there's more opportunities for them to support. And I, I thank them already. I thank all of you already for what you've already done. And I continue to thank you because I know to stay at this level, they will continue to show up and support our student-athletes and allow us to keep providing a first-class experience for all of our student-athletes, all 21 sports. Josh, we appreciate your leadership, and uh, we appreciate all you do for the University of Georgia. Thank you. Appreciate it. Go Dawgs! Please welcome our next speaker, Georgia's 83rd governor and alumnus of the University of Georgia, the Honorable Brian Kemp. Well, thanks, Shock. I'm going to start with the same thing I did last year. How about them dogs? It's been such another remarkable season for this team and this university. And as the men on the stage know, the level of success does not happen overnight. I want to congratulate Coach Smart and his whole staff for putting in the many hours to build not just a championship team, but a championship program that this state can be proud of. As you guys know, Coach Smart is more than a coach. He is a teacher, a motivator, a counselor, and a professor of the gridiron. He's also a professor of things in general who has taught all of us to keep chopping wood. Beware of spiritual pride. Do the duty that lies near us. Work in the right direction that iron sharpens iron to attack the day, to be connected and to be elite. But I also want to thank Athletic Director Josh Brooks for his leadership, as well as the entire Athletic Department staff for all they do to make days like this possible. I also want to give a special thanks to all the UGA faculty, staff, and students who make this campus such a special place. And of course, you all, the best fans in the country. The last and certainly not least, I want to thank President Moorhead for his leadership and vision, which continue to guide this proud institution, not just athletically, but also academically. As y'all know, earlier this year, we lost one of the icons of this university and this team and Coach Dooley. In the great seed field of time, we celebrate the lights of Vince Dooley, Larry Munson, and all the other Bulldogs who invested their hope in this day's inevitability. The leadership that Coach Smart and Athletic Director, Director Brooks and President Moorhead have shown will act as a seed field for future championships because the seeds planted by this team will enable future teams to succeed as well. I want to close by recognizing the men whose hard work and performance in the film room, on the practice field, and in stadiums from here to Los Angeles brought each of these trophies back to Athens. The offense led by Stetson Bennett, our first Heisman candidate in 20 years.
There's been a lot said about him, but all I know is he just simply wins, baby. I don't know if he reminds me more of a toil-worn craftsman or Cincinnatus, but I do know Stetson left his helmet in southeast Georgia, and he has left his mark on college football. And a tremendous defense at every level that was told it would struggle ultimately to shut down some of the best offenses in football, but they did that with some incredible leadership from Nolan Smith. <laughs> he was injured and went through the everlasting no, but he continued to serve as a captain and an inspiration to this team. Georgia could not be more proud of all of you and no matter where your paths lead, you will always be known in this state as national champions. Last year, I uh, issued an official proclamation in recognition of the great accomplishment. And it is my honor once again to declare today Georgia Bulldogs National Championship Saturday in the great state of Georgia. Channel 2's live coverage of Georgia's National Championship Ceremony is brought to you in part by Georgia's own credit union, Georgia's own credit union, banking on purpose. All right, thank you, Governor Kemp. Our next guest was named the eighth commissioner of the SEC in June of 2015. Under his leadership, the SEC has claimed five national titles in football, including the 2022 Georgia Bulldogs. Please welcome SEC Commissioner Greg Sankey. Thank you. Thank you. It is good to be in the state of Georgia today, where we understand you tailgate before college football games. Am I right? Thank you to President Moorhead, to Josh Brooks, to Kirby Smart for the opportunity be, to be with you today to celebrate the University of Georgia's second consecutive college football national championship. That's pretty remarkable. It is the fourth consecutive national championship won by a team from the Southeastern Conference. And never correct the hosts, but the SEC's sixth national championship during the college football playoff era. And since 1998, six different SEC universities have had their football teams win national championships, making clear that we are the leader of and in college football in this country. <laughs> On Monday night in a rainy Los Angeles, the Georgia Bulldogs put an exclamation point on this reality with an undefeated regular season, a national championship. Again, the opportunity to bring the big wooden SEC championship trophy for a conference championship here to Athens, Georgia, based on an SEC Eastern Division championship. And once again, you showed the strength that is present here and present across our conference. What has happened on the field in our stadiums has me excited about our future as we look to growing to 16 teams as a conference, to a new media agreement that will add to the strength and the support provided to the men and women in our athletics programs. Even with the change in the college football championship, we know that we will be in the lead. We've also honored the memory of Coach Dooley this fall, just as we did today. He committed to build a foundation. He committed as a leader. And we need leaders today in college football and college sports, not leaders 
who make a stop to build a resume and go on to something else, but those who understand the problems ahead are real and demand our attention. In the name, image, and likeness era, we need consistent national standards to make sure the opportunities enjoyed by the young man to our side that are new, but those opportunities don't diminish the meaning of college sports in this nation, that they don't take away the opportunities for young people. We need to engage our state and our federal leaders to make sure we have these standards in place so that we have not only opportunities but protections that make certain that on our volleyball and basketball courts, on our tracks and in our fields, that young men and young women have opportunities for decades, just like the legacy built here by Coach Dooley and those who have followed at the University of Georgia. As we look to our future, let us never forget that it's more than just a moment, but this moment of celebration is critically important to take time to say, you've done it right, young men. You've represented your university and your state and your family so well. So thank you to those players. Thank you to the coaches and their families. Thank you to the staff at the University of Georgia and its leadership who made today possible. Congratulations, but I've been asked to remind those of you who'll be back next year that it is 231 days until that first Saturday of college football. It is 322 days until the 2023 SEC championship game down the road in Atlanta. It is 350 days until the college football semifinals and 359 days until we gather again in Houston to determine the College Football National Championship. Enjoy today, but get ready for tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Sankey, and thank you for the correction as well there. Now it's my pleasure to introduce the 22nd president of the University of Georgia, Jerry Moorhead, a graduate of the UGA School of Law. President Moorhead has led UGA since 2013. He serves as the president of the Southeastern Conference, a member of the NCAA Board of Governors, chair of the NCAA Division I Board of Directors, and as a trustee of the National Football Foundation. Let's hear it for UGA President Jerry Moorhead. It's great to be a Georgia Bulldog. L look around for a moment at this fantastic crowd. This is an unimaginable moment for us to gather back to back to celebrate national championships. And I want all of our students that are here to recognize that this hasn't always been the case at this institution. Enjoy what has been created and be a part of what is coming in the future as this dynasty continues to develop. We are truly a powerhouse in academics and athletics at the University of Georgia. I can't help but think how proud Coach Dooley would be to see us all here gathered again. And I know we all wish he was with us today, but we recognize him with our presence. I want to thank Governor Kemp for his unwavering support of this institution and our football team and for recognizing our extraordinary achievement. Thank you, Governor. <laughs> Commissioner Sankey, we are grateful for your tremendous leadership of the Southeastern Conference and for clearly being the greatest commissioner in all the land. Thank you for being here today. 
to our amazing football team. You are the champions, and the Bulldog Nation will never forget your incredible accomplishments, your historic, undefeated 15-0 record, your SEC championship, your thrilling come-from-behind Peach Bowl victory, your dominant win in the national championship game in front of a packed SoFi Stadium and millions and millions of people watching all around the world. But most of all, we will remember your grit, your tenacity, and how proud you have made all of us to be a part of the Bulldog Nation. Thank you so much. To our coaches and football support staff, thank you for your hard work and for the sacrifices that you have made and for the sacrifices that your families have made as you have worked to develop these extraordinary student athletes. And I want to take a moment to thank our young and exceptional athletic director, Josh Brooks. What a record you have developed here as our athletic director. Congratulations. And to our incredible fans, our fans are the best fans in college football, period. You are loyal, you are loud, and the passion that you bring gives our team a home field advantage everywhere they go, every weekend, no matter where they play. Thank you so much. And to Coach Smart, who I have known since he was a standout student athlete here at UGA, your drive, your relentless work ethic, your devotion to the University of Georgia has led us once again to the very top of college football. Kirby, thank you for your leadership. We are proud now, thanks to you, to be Rose Bowl champions, Sugar Bowl champions, Orange Bowl champions, Peach Bowl champions, SEC champions, and now back-to-back -back national champions. Indeed, it is a great time to be a Georgia Bulldog. Everyone, please join me in welcoming our two-time national championship coach, Kirby Smart. Thank you, thank you. Tell me last year we were going back to back. Wow. Uh, where to begin? I know my players are over there going, be brief, coach, be brief. I'm cold. So they over there struggling. But you know what? They're tough enough to suck it up and handle it over there in the shade. I can see everyone I'm freezing. I need you to give them a standing ovation. Everyone of y'all stand up and get out your seat. Get out your seat for these guys. Get up. Get up. Get up. I need y'all to get up. Get up. Hey. All right. Listen up. They can sit down now. All right, players, you're halfway through the Friday special teams meeting. Coach Muschamp just came up and gave y'all the speech about melting face masks and got y'all to clap to wake up, because every one of them know what I'm talking about. This is a special group. These young men, most of them, sat on this stage last year, and every one of them took advantage of a hell of an opportunity in front of them when everybody in the country, I didn't have one 
guy, not even our very own David Pollock, that said this group would even make the playoffs. They had something different in mind. So I want to take a, uh, an opportunity here to thank several groups, okay? First of all, I want anybody that's in these players' families, their parents, their aunts, uncles, their guardians, to take a stand. The players' families, please stand up. All these players' families that helped get them to us, brought them to us, give it up for them. Unbelievable group of parents to support these young men. Thank you, guys. They travel like our fans travel. They go where we go. And a, a couple moments stick out to me in this season that I want to share. The first is in Atlanta where it all started, right there against Oregon. What an unbelievable atmosphere. Got to play in our home stadium there at Mercedes-Benz three times, and you guys brought us through every time. Unbelievable atmosphere to play there. And then to these players, the guys sitting listening, and they know who they are. What an environment we went into and probably didn't play our best game in Columbia, Missouri. But the look on their eyes at halftime, I'll never forget that locker room walking in, a lot of guys shell-shocked, losing in a game we probably shouldn't have been losing in, and every one of them believed. Every one of them believed. Guys stuck out in that second half. I'll never forget Kenny McIntosh injured injured, hardly practiced that week, deep thigh bruise, carrying the ball repeatedly, running through people and putting the offense on his shoulders and making plays and doing a hell of a job. Thank you, Kenny. I got another one for you. You know, a lot of doubt started to creep in for a big home game that was brewing. And it was right after one of our biggest rivals. We go to Jacksonville, we come back here to play. And you guys, the people in these stands were elite for that game. Best home game I've ever been a part of. Made it electric, took over the stadium, did an incredible job. We had a guy that got defensive player of the game in that game. You know, he didn't have to come back. He's gonna be a first round pick. He's gonna probably be a top 10 pick, maybe a top five pick, but he elected to come back and play in that game because of the love he has for his brothers. Jalen Carter, thank you so much for coming back and finishing it the right way. So many of these seniors and guys that are going to be departing this team meant so much to this team. And, you know, uh, I, I like to thank so many people, and I like to tell a brief story. Um, but, you know, after the national championship game, my wife came running on the field. She found me, gave me a big hug and a kiss, and I was fired up. And she said, why did you worry so much for 10 days? This was going to be so easy. And I said, baby, I didn't know it was going to be like this, okay? But we, we got the opportunity to honor a lot of our seniors and a lot of our defensive players that walked off that field, um, offense and defense, with the way they played and the way they carried themselves as, uh, as Georgia football players. Um, but it meant so much to me, and I know these players will always remember it, I'll always remember it. We had a Friday meeting in Atlanta before we played Ohio State, and I heard several players stand up and talk about what this team meant to them and what the connection meant to them and how much they had been through in their careers here, some of them fourth and fifth year guys. And I was sitting on the side kind of watching it all and I really got emotional and it really hit me. And when I went up to go talk to the team, you know, I lost it a little bit and uh, some of them still pick at me today because I, I teared up a little bit and cried because they've meant so much. They've been through so much to see guys grow from the time they arrived here like a Chris Smith, a Warren McClendon. All these guys have given body parts and given injuries to this program. It means so, so much. So I want one more round of applause for this team that was together, stuck together, and meant a ton. Now, I, I, I got another one. I got another group I got to thank, all right? So our staff, guys, and I know you heard it all throughout the year, our staff, we lost four coaches off last year's staff, a lot of uh, support staff people, and we replaced them with new staff members. And this staff is one of the most incredible staffs. They've sacrificed time away from their families. 
their wives raise their children. They're not able to be there with them all the time. They spend a lot of time with our players as their own more than they do with their own kids. And I'd like to take an opportunity for all our staff's families, the staff's wives, the staff kids, and our staff. Please stand up. The staff is incredible. Stand up wherever you are. Get up, get up, get up, get up. There they are over there. They do an incredible job. They sacrifice their husbands and they sacrifice time to be away from them for these players in this university. It means a ton to me. I'd also like to thank our administration. Josh Brooks, President Moorhead, for tremendous support. What we've been able to do here and we continue to do behind us is progress. Progress gives us an opportunity to continue this success. I've told every freshman that's come into our place, you don't inherit greatness. You, you don't inherit this. You've come into a special place a place that cares about football. These fans turn out all the time. They travel all over the country. But you don't inherit that. You work for it. You earn it. And that's what this team did over the last year. They earned every single victory along the way. And it was hard. And it was tough. And they did it the right way. So I, I want to leave you with one good, easy thought. And I talked to somebody this morning about this, and I thought, what a great way to leave this. You know, peak performance, we all try to have, right? It's easy to try to have peak performance, but that's easy. Achieving success, it's hard. It's really hard. Sustaining success is even harder. So the success we had last year and the ability to win the first national championship in 40-something years, that's really hard, okay? Being able to sustain it is much harder. Translation for anybody out there, you can have a good day. Many people can find a way to accomplish something of note, but only a select few can maintain a true standard of excellence. And that's what this group has done and has really been remarkable in when their journey and their progress. Winning takes talent. Winning takes talent, the great John Wooden said. Winning takes talent, but to repeat, it takes character, and these men have character. A special thanks to Bulldog Nation. We love it here. Our family loves it here, and we can't wait to see what lies ahead for this team. This team will have to be hungry because a lot of this team is coming back, and we want great things coming out of this team. Thank you so much for being here, Dog Nation. We love you, and go dogs. You're watching Channel 2's live coverage of Georgia's National Championship Ceremony brought to you in part by Piedmont. Piedmont, official health care provider of UGA Athletics. These are the futures Georgia's own members build. These are the moments that fill the futures our members build. These are the roads that lead to moments that fill the futures our members build. And this is when choosing community, values, independence and ownership changed their journey forever find out how it could change yours georgia's own credit union banking on purpose all right all right now it's time to hear from a couple players that were part of this unbelievable season. Three captains on this Bulldog team, Cedric Van Pran, Chris Smith, and the mailman himself, Stetson Bennett. All right, all right fellas, say it. I'm going uh, to start with you, man. You Get your pleasantries in. All right. Uh, Said uh, all year I've heard uh, Coach Mark talk about composure. He's talking about connection, the resiliency you guys have had. Kind of speak on how that's kind of prevailed you guys through this season with some of those terms you guys use all year. Uh, so I feel like those are just our DNA traits. And being honest, it kind of started back in this very stadium during this time and around February, Marchish. Um, out here running, you know, early mornings and you know, kind of out here grinding, you know, to go back to the connection, being able to pick those guys up in those hard times because 
We have to do the same thing in Missouri. We have to do the same thing for Ohio State. So all of those things come into play. Talk about composure. I can very vividly remember Nolan Smith walking around with a card that said composure um, in the Ohio State game, making sure that guys understood that this was going to be a full quarter battle and, you know, we had to keep going. And going back to the resiliency and toughness, I think that goes back to you can look at any individual player on this team. You know, I think we all embody that, and that's just who we want to be. So I feel like all of those things make up the core of this team. Well said. Chris. Chris, coming into this season, everybody talked about Georgia lost so many guys on the defense side of the ball. 15 guys went to the draft. Most of them were on the defensive side of the ball. This defense wasn't going to be as good. But again, you guys were a top 10 defense. Only gave up 14 points a game. What was the difference in this defense and what was said amongst you guys all season leading all the way up until Monday night that gave you guys the confidence to play the way you did? Well, I say the biggest difference is the mentality that, that we approach the game with. And I got to give all the credit to the coaches and the guys, man. We just put our head down. We heard all the doubters, but we ain't listening to that. Only the opinions that we cared about was the people in the building and all the fans. So at the end of the day, we just put our head down and just wanted to work. And we heard all the doubt, but we wanted to prove everybody wrong. And I feel like we did that going 15 and 0 back to back and that's some champions. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, Stequavius, I mean, uh, Stetson. Uh, I'm going to say this, um, when it comes to quarterbacks at the University of Georgia, it's pretty cool to be standing on the stage with the GOAT. Um, Stan, obviously, everybody knows your story, everybody knows you came back this year, but when you look back on your career, you look back on this journey, what would be the thing you'd be most proud of as a dog? Yeah, Shaq, I don't know. Um, I don't know what I'm going to be most proud of. I, I, I keep trying to tell people I just did what I thought was right every day, uh, you know. And if you think you should do that, then what? Uh, I think everybody should do it, you know. Um, the thing I'm going to be most proud of, look at him. <laughs> Man, y'all burn us. Y'all burn us. Y'all kept telling us how bad we were, and y'all couldn't understand it, and, you know, and we kept winning, and, <laughs> and we kept embarrassing people, but y'all had other storylines, and it was 49 to 3, and it was, you know, 65 to 7. It was everything, and y'all didn't want to believe it, because you didn't, <laughs> that makes no sense to me. Yeah, I, hey, but, you know, um, Screw it, we got two rings, man, you know? No doubt, no doubt, no doubt. Chris, um, as, a guy, as a guy who had the chance to leave last year and you came back, why did you feel it was important to come back for this season when you had a chance to leave and go fulfill your dreams? Oh, uh, well, it definitely was a tough decision, something that I had to talk to with my coaches and my parents because, you know, um, growing up your whole life, all you want to do is go to the NFL. And uh, when you had an opportunity and you're so close to it, you want to take that chance. But I, I just felt it was a good time for me to come back and spend another season with the guys and spend another season with the coaches, perfecting my game plan and just building that connection that we had all year. You know, I'm very glad I did. It's the best decision I could have ever made, just being able to go back to back with the guys and uh, experience Dog Nation for one more year, man. It was real special for sure. Say I want to ask you about the big guys. And I don't know if people don't know you're the, you're the center. You control everything. Us quarterbacks think we control stuff, but we don't. We know you guys control everything. But just talk about the passion that you guys play with up front. And Coach Mark talks about it all the time. You guys get to finish ball games, run the rock. How important is it for you guys to be able to do that week in and week out? Uh, starting off, I just kind of want to look at all of these guys over here and just say, man, Y'all did a tremendous job this year, and genuinely, none of this would have been, you know, able to be possible without y'all up front. So I appreciate all the work y'all did. And on Sundays, seven days a week in the summer, we're working out in those things, man. All the work that we put in, I feel like it really paid off for a historical season. But um, 
I don't know. I, I can't speak enough about the work that those guys put in. It means so much to me to be a, be a part of that and, you know, be one of the only offensive lines ever to give up nine sacks in 15 games. So the uh, only one. It, it was truly, truly a blessing. So um, super proud. We couldn't do it without Coach Stacy Searles and um, Eddie Gordon, Devontae Danzi. So uh, we really appreciate all the work that everybody put in. Uh, we were able to do something short. Absolutely. All right, Stan, I'm going to give you an opportunity to. <laughs> we don't. Yeah. <laughs> any, any parting words you would love to give Dog Nation? Obviously, you've done so much for the university, you've done so much for this program. What would you like to say to Dog Nation as you leave? Yeah, wow. Uh, hell of a question. Um, <laughs> Listen, I, I don't have much to say. Uh, y'all boys are coming back next year. When they say it ain't one yet, it ain't one yet. So it's up to y'all. Uh, everybody in here, thank y'all for everything. Uh, but it's up to y'all. Hey, it ain't the X's and O's. It's the Jimmy's and Joe's, right? All right, Chris, you got the same opportunity, brother. Last one. What do you got for Dog Nation? All I got to say is thank you, Dog Nation, and continue support that y'all have for me throughout my whole career. And make sure y'all come back next year and support the rest of the guys. Cedric Van Praying, Chris Smith, Stetson Bennett, your captains. All right, now it's time for the presentation of the National Championship Trophies. Here to present the National Football MacArthur Trophy today to President Moorhead and Head Coach Kirby Smart is Steve Hatcher from the National Football Foundation. Good afternoon. It's wonderful to be with all of you. I'm surprised that you, with all of you people behind Georgia, that you only scored 65 points in the national championship game. A little historical perspective, and take just a moment. Every year since 1959, the National Football Foundation College Football Hall of Fame has presented the MacArthur Bowl, represented on the far right. A board member who created Tiffany's created that. It's all silver, and if you look at it very closely, all of the national champions from 1959 are etched on that replica of a stadium. Historically, it's really important. It's named after General Douglas MacArthur, who was Supreme Allied Commander, football leader at Army, football leader leading our country. Carved in its walls is a, is a saying that says, there is no substitute for victory. MacArthur believed that football presented opportunities to have leaders go into our society, learn, pr pretend to not have any problems and to be leaders all the time. The administration led by Dr. Moorhead, Josh Brooks, Kirby Smart has been marvelous. Two back-to-back -back championships, as you heard, is unbelievable in this day and age. This marks the third MacArthur Bowl presentation to Georgia. And we'd all be remiss, it's been reported, to not mention our great friend, Vince Dooley, a college football Hall of Famer, and his great wife, Barbara, who served on our board of directors for a long time. So on behalf of our chairman, Archie Manning, our board of directors, that includes Commissioner Sankey and now Dr. Moorhead. It's my, it's my privilege, humble privilege, to present the Douglas MacArthur Trophy to Coach Kirby Smart, his staff, and all of you in Dog Nation. Congratulations, Coach Kirby. Thank you.
All right, thank you, Steve, and the National Football Foundation. Now here to present the American Football Coaches Association trophy to the Jerry Reed Parker Director of Athletics, Josh Brooks, and Head Coach Kirby Smart is Todd Berry, Executive Director of the AFCA. I think the ball's coming right there. Coach Smart, Mr. Brooks, once again, congratulations on not just a tremendous season, but an incredible season. Undefeated, that doesn't happen very often. And then a dominant win as a national champion. And so it is my honor on behalf of our 12,000 coaches around the country um, to present you with the iconic Crystal Ball Trophy, the AFCA Coaches Trophy. Great ball security here, too, by the way. Thank you, Todd, and the AFCA. Now here to present the College Football Trophy. Bill Hancock, Executive Director of the CFP. I am always delighted to return to this beautiful and historic campus. You have a special place here. Do not take it for granted. I'm here on behalf of the conferences and schools that administer the college football playoff. First of all, to say there's only nine of these and you have two of them. <laughs> and now it's my pleasure to present the national championship trophy, the most coveted trophy in college football to the Georgia Bulldogs and coach Kirby Smart. This is all ours. Love it. All right, we got one more last piece of business before we leave. Please direct your attention to the top of the East End Zone, where family members of the legendary Coach Vince Dooley will help us raise the 2022 championship banner. And like we did last year, I'm going to need your help. Let's count down. Five, four, three, two, one.